Hello, everyone. In previous presentations, we discussed about the metabolism of phenylalanine and tyrosine. We also discussed about the phenylketonuria. And now let's move on and discuss about the tyrosine, amia, and alkaptonuria. Those are the disorders of tyrosine metabolism. Here is the overview of my presentation where I will go over the tyrosinemias and related disorder. And each of those disorders will be dealt in this fashion. We'll go over the prevalence, inheritance pattern, biochemical basis, pathological manifestation, diagnosis and treatment. Before we go on to the actual disease, let's review the metabolic pathway of tyrosine and phenylalanine metabolism. The first step is the conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine by an enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase. And once the tyrosine is formed, this tyrosine is converted into para-hydroxyphenylpyruvate by an enzyme called tyrosine transaminase. The para-phenyl, para-hydroxyphenylpyruvate is converted into homogentisate by the enzyme called para-hydroxyphenylpyruvate hydroxylase or dioxygenase. And this homogentisate is converted into 4-melyl acetoacetate by an enzyme called homogentisate oxidase. In this reaction, there is a opening of the ring occurs and the malyl acetoacetate is ultimately converted into acetoacetate and fumarate in two-step reactions. In this chapter, we'll deal about, previously we discussed about the phenylketonuria. So in this presentation, we'll be discussing about the, uh, the different type of tyrosinemias, type one, type two, and type three, or neonatal tyrosinemia, and all captonuria. The first is the tyrosinemia type one, which is caused by the deficiency of fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase. And the enzyme is here. This, the deficiency of this enzyme blocks the conversion of fumaryl acetoacetate to acetoacetate and fumarate. Let's dive into detail of this. The prevalence of this disease is, again, this is a rare dis disorder where the, the prevalence is one in 100,000 to 120,000. The inheritance pattern is, this is an autosomal recessive disorder. And the gene for the enzyme fumaryl acetoacetate is present in chromosome number 15 long arm. And the deficiency of this or defective gene causes the accumulation of fumaryl acetoacetate and its byproducts such as succinyl acetoacetate and succinyl acetone. The accumulation of fumaryl acetoacetate causes the cellular damage and apoptosis in the liver and the succinyl acetone interferes hepatic enzyme including para-hydroxyphenylpyruvic acid hydroxylase and LR dehydrogenase. This para-hydroxyphenylpyruvate acid hydroxylase is an enzyme that is involved in the phenylalanine metabolism. And this, oh, sorry, phenylalanine and tyrosine metabolism. And this LR dehydratase is an enzyme that is responsible for the synthesis of HEM. So therefore, therefore we observe in this, uh, in this type one tyrosinemia, we observe the increased tyrosine level, increased succinyl acetone, and low the delta ALA dehydratase activity. And the diagnosis is done by uh, measuring the blood tyrosine level and the elevated blood tyrosine level is suggestive of the uh, type one tyrosinemia. In addition, there is increased succinyl acetone in blood and urine. And also there are other amino acids are also increased. And the diagnosis is confirmed using the sequence analysis of fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase gene. 
The treatment of this type 1 tyrosinemia includes the known, which is also known as uh, NTBC, which blocks the para-hydroxyphenyl pyruvate dioxygenase and prevents accumulation of humoral acetoacid with dietary management. So basically, in this treatment, we are trying to prevent the, the formation of phenyl acetoacetates. Therefore, we, we give the subjects or the patients with the compound that actually inhibits the upstream pathway where it just blocks the formation of this formation of homogenesic acid. Next, the other is the type 2 tyrosinemia. This, tire, this type 2 tyrosinemia is also known as Richard Hanhart syndrome, and it is caused by the deficiency of enzyme tyrosine aminotransferase. In, and as you can see, this is the second step of the phenylalanine metabolism and the first step of tyrosine metabolism where this tyrosine transaminase undergo the transamination to form para hydroxyphenyl pyruvate. Again, this is a rare disorder with one to one million uh, cases worldwide and it is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. The biochemical basis is it the because of the defective TAD gene that is present in the chromosome 16 long arm, there is increased tyrosine. And in, in addition to that one, this increased tyrosine will lead to the formation of or activation of the alternate pathway that leads, leads to the formation of hydroxyphenyl pyruvate, hydroxyphenyl lactate, and hydroxyphenyl acetate, which can be seen in this in the urine. The pathological manifestation is mainly ophthalm ophthalmic with a recalcy trend pseudodendritic keratitis caused by the accumulation of these byproducts. The diagnosis is, this is usually milder than the type 1 tyrosinemia and generally it is associated with the elevated tyrosine level greater than 500 micromole. Next, the presence of para-hydroxyphenyl pyruvate, para-hydroxyphenyl lactate and para-hydroxyphenyl acetate in urine are also suspective or presence of these compounds is suspective of the type two tyrosinemia. To just to differentiate this, Type 2 tyrosinemia differs from type 1 tyrosinemia in that there is only presence of elevated tyrosine in this, in this type 2, but in type 1, in addition to the, the amino acid tyrosine, there is increased enzymes, or sorry, in amino acids such as methionine. The molecular analysis is the confirmatory diagnosis where the sequence analysis of tyrosine transaminase is done, or transaminase or tyrosine aminotransferase is done. And the management, again, is the dietary management. There is no treatment for this. Third, uh, the rarest one among, among the tyrosinemia is the type three tyrosinemia, also known as neonatal tyrosinemia. This is caused by the deficiency of hydroxyphenyl hydroxylase deficiency. So this is where, and this is the enzyme that is responsible for the conversion of beta hydroxyphenyl pyruvate. And the deficiency of this hydroxylase enzyme causes the accumulation of phenyl pyruvate, hydroxyphenyl pyruvate. And and it also increased the formation and excretion of para-hydroxyphenyl pyruvate, para-hydroxyphenyl lactate, and para-hydroxyphenyl acetate in urine. The pathological manifestation include neurological manifestation with an intellectual uh, disability or ataxia, and there is no liver in involvement in this case as well. 
And again, this is even milder than the other two tyrosinemia with an elevated blood tyrosine level of 350 to 650 micromole in the blood. And the presence of para-hydroxyphenyl pyruvate, phenyl lactate, and hydroxyphenyl acetate in urine is the is this would suggest the presence of any of these type of tyrosinemia. And again, the confirmation is done by sequence analysis of hydroxyphenyl alanine pyruvate hydroxylase uh, gene. And the treatment is again dietary management. There is no treatment for this. Now moving on to alkaptonuria. Alkaptonuria is a disorder because caused by the deficiency of homogentisate oxidase. And during the with the blockade of this enzyme, the homogentisate is not able to be converted into 4 malal acetoacetate. And the prevalence of this alkaptonuria is 1 in 250,000 to 1 in 1 million. And the, it is inherited by autosomal recessive manner. The alkaptonuria is caused by the defective homogentisate oxygen gene that leads to the decreased or deficiency of homogentisate oxidase. Because of the blockage of this homogentisate, homogentisate to melalacetate formation, there is accumulation of homogentisate in the blood and urine. And one of the key feature of this disease is the urine is turned black on standing for a long time because of the presence of homogentisate in the urine. And the accumulation of homogentisate acid and its oxidation produces, pro, oxidation products are accumulated in the connective tissue leads, and it causes the coloring called, known as ochronosis. And those ochronosis includes the brown, and also there is a brown pigmentation of sclera is observed as shown here. Here cartilages are also uh, pigmented and there is arthritis is seen in, in this patient. The diagnosis is the presence of urinary homogentisitic acid and more than one gram per day. Uh, in a normal adult, it is usually less than 30 milligram per day. And the confirmatory diagnosis again involves the sequencing analysis of homogentisate oxidase gene. And there is no treatment, therefore the dietary management is the only way to reduce the symptoms. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or go to www.medicalbiochemist.com for similar content. Thank you.